I'm dripping man. <laughs> it's fucking huge. Ten pound cone hair comes and sits on my mum and then does a sh black shit on her. <laughs> He pulled down his trousers and his balls were so big he couldn't fit it into a pipe. No, glass. that's really scary. <laughs> when I was having sex, my mum would suddenly pop into my head. Oh, I'm fighting for divorce. I'm dripping wet. Oh my God. <laughs> because I just had a spray tan at 8am in the morning. Because we're off on our holiday. You had a spray tan at 8 in the morning? Yeah, but let me just walk you through this. All I'm right. hitting the ripe old age of 29 and in a month. Um, oh I, I need to slow down on the sun tanning. Someone's old. You're 40. <laughs> I'm not. I guess I'm 35. No one really knows the true age of Jamie Lang. You're, yes, they do. I have no my passport. One, no one knows the true age of me because I've been 29, as I tell you guys all the time, for five years in the press and it's highly upsetting. You have been. You were born in 1994, you 19th in, of October. You were born in 1882. <laughs> I was 1882. <laughs> <laughs> When was I born? Go, just say it really 1988. quick. 1988. And then what is my... 3rd of November 1988. My middle names, go. Gr Robin Grant Lang. No, like... like <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> mental. You're my wife. I got it all right, you silly Billy. <laughs> okay, silly girl. Sophie Charlotte Abu, 1994. I've got 19th of October, name. born in Warwickshire. Boom. All right, born in Simon Sester. Boom. <laughs> I was not born in Simon. Yes, you were. No, I was. What hospital oh, is it? Sorry, I was made in born in Chelsea. No, you fucking weren't. You born in Cyrus Sester. Stop lying. I was not born in Simon Sester. Yes, you were. Where no, were you born? The John Radcliffe in Oxford. Oh, um, maybe you were at Oxford. Well, why? Your mum's never lived in Oxford. Why were you born in Oxford? Because what hospital is in Simon Sester? There's a science, there's a hospital. No, there's a doctor's. We drove past it all the time because we were going to go there for some reason. I can't quite remember, but we were going to go there during COVID. Okay, well, I was born in the John Radcliffe Hospital at dawn on the 3rd of November, 1988. Devil child. Devil child. I was born on the 19th of October. My mum doesn't have a clue what time and she doesn't know how many hours she was in labour, so I will never know. Could have been born on the 18th. We won't know. I think we mentioned the ball. Sophie was also £10. She was like, oh, she, I was nine she came out with Clothes on. <laughs> it's fucking wild, but I was like three weeks late. And then they put me on my mum's tummy and I did a shit immediately. And your fat the baby's first poo is like tar. So my mum literally knew what she was signing up for. I was just gonna shit all over for the rest of my life. They, they literally like, here's your baby, this fucking huge baby. I mean she, some, some woman. First thing my sister it was came some out. Some woman that was. Yeah, she was carrying like a five-year-old toddler. <laughs> First thing my sister came out covered in hair. So she had that trauma, like literally head to toe hair and it rubs off. Like, like a werewolf. I don't know what it's called. It's called like downs and it rubs off. But she was basically like a werewolf. And my, when my mum tells everyone this, when she had a few glasses of wine, she's like, oh, George came out so hairy. George is like, can you stop? Like, please. She's like, but it was so cute. And it, it kept rubbing off. Like a full head. She had, my mum says that she had a full head, a monobrow. And it was just all hair, like curtains on her forehead. Black hair. And then I came out. She was quite small though. And then I came out and I was 10 pounds. I mean, honestly, the damage I must have done. My friend, um, he had his baby and it was his first one. And his wife and the baby was a bit stuck. So they had to use the suction. That's which what is... I had. Yeah, my head was like a coat. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's really, it's fine. But what happens is that you use a suction on the baby to, to help pull it out and it stretches the baby's head a little Ugh. bit. Right, that, so it becomes a cone. And then he said he was his first child ever. He was holding the baby. He didn't want to ask if the head goes back to normal. So he just thought the head was going to be like a lamppost. <laughs> yeah, I imagine my mum bought the thing was... Do you think that's why you're so long? I'm not that long, you're just short. <laughs> I was just, like I got sucked out of mum so she didn't actually see the big long head but my dad saw me like this big long like elf head just being carried away into the I got taken straight into the like <laughs> toddler like <laughs> the toddler with the long elf hat on like honestly no head just, like this pointy long triangle head like I've got a cone head <laughs> And Come I got taken back. straight to like the hospital room or whatever it's called, like the, you know, where people. Where and the, your dad swabs you over. He was like, fuck, that was not mine. 
But anyway, I couldn't, they didn't see me for a couple of hours because I had such a headache because they'd sucked my brain for so long. I was in absolute agony. And then when they saw me, imagine two hours later, they're like, oh, can't wait to see my little sweet Sophie. We're going to call her Sophie. This fucking huge 10 pound cone head comes and sits on my mum and then does a sh- black shit on her. Black poo came out of me and apparently it's like tar. And I shout on her. And that was our bonding experience. I'd have been like, send her back. No, I wouldn't. I can't say that. So that's the funniest thing I've ever heard. You were, I can imagine. Only imagine. Oh you my like. God. So anyway, you had a spray tan. What happened? Had a spray tan. And lo and behold, two things happened. So she comes in, ATM, obviously been to the gym, had a sauna before. Yes, I know. Who am I? And in, yeah. in she comes and she's like, hi, I'm Teresa. I don't know whether I can say her name. She's like, hi, I'm Teresa. I was like, hello. She was like, I've not met you, but I used to do your husband all the time. I was like, busted. <laughs> I said, how often did he get one? She said, every two weeks. Busted. <laughs> okay. Every right. two weeks, you used to get a spray tan. I'm not every two weeks. I used to get occasional spray tan. I find that fi- fascinating. Why did you start when you were with me? Because uh, I didn't need to good. impress anyone. But but wait, but you were so tan back in the day on me. Yeah. Chelsea, see, like orange all the time. Oh my God, you were orange. I was not orange. And it all makes sense now. I had no idea. I, every month I would have like a spray tan. Not but every it doesn't last weeks. a month. It lasts like a week back. Maybe like every two. I was on television 24-7. It so was, into... was I. I didn't get any. Y- yes, you bloody did. No, I didn't. I didn't really know about spray tans until I dated you. But and then, and then this was magnificent. So she sprays me away. Spray, spray, spray. And then she's like, do you want contour? And I was like, what's that? She basically drawn abs on me. No. I don't, I haven't, I can't see it, but she said that she's going to like, she scooped under my butt cheeks. Like oh I had God. to like bend over and she basically said she's like giving me a nice juicy butt. I don't know how it's going to work. And then she made me turn to the side and like clench my, my non-existent muscles. And she like defined. She contoured your whole body? Yeah. Oh my God. I might go and get a spray tan right now. Well, not now, but after this. But how wild is that? That's pretty wild, honey. Keep everyone updated. <laughs> you, you, uh, the, oh, then don't hold your breath because it's going to be riveting. <laughs> well, I mean, if she's going to give me apps, I think everyone will be working this way. It's very true. All right. Okay. Listen, honey, uh, are you ready to begin? This wonderful podcast, this beautiful podcast, this excellent podcast that we get to do every single Jamie week together. Jamie keeps having stimulants. He has steroids. Everybody, no. it's not steroids. It's not steroids. Take that back. Jamie has these things called stimmies. No, I go and train with Sean, who's been on the podcast. He's my amazing PT. And I say to him, hey, I don't want any this stimulant in my drink. And he puts a stimulant, I think, in my drink, which basically makes you work out quick. It's like a pre-workout. It's, it's literally illegal. Okay. All right. Should we begin the episode? Let's begin. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Newlyweds Podcast. It's episode 11. 11? Of season two. Episode 11 <laughs> Of season two Of season two um, Big news I was going nice. Speaking of stimulants Yeah Sophie and I uh, go walking the other day We're having a lovely little stroll And we walk into this wonderful coffee shop That's round the corner from us mm. And we walk in there And Sophie starts asking to have a coffee And I'm like, okay, fine I just don't really understand what's going on Why? And, it's a coffee Yeah, it was a coffee Okay, and you were having a conversation about this coffee that you wanted to buy from this guy. And the guy... Oh, yeah, it was like specified. It was a special coffee. It was the special coffee. Pour over. The Yemen pour over. It was called the Yemen pour over Something coffee. Along those lines. I looked at the board. It was 20 pounds. Yeah. It was a 20 quid coffee. Well, obviously, I wanted to try it because a 20 quid coffee has got to be fantastic. Yeah, but you were trying to add milk and ice. and you wanted milk, an ice. Iced... Well, I don't like coffee. So I thought... Why were you going to buy a 20 because quid coffee? Because I was intrigued. I thought maybe it'd have like superpowers or something. But then I wanted to put my ice and oat milk in it because I don't actually like the taste of coffee. And he was horrified. <laughs> the guy, the coffee maker, the barista was horrified. I honestly, I left, I said to Jamie, God, some men are really aggressive, aren't they? He like wanted to beat me up. He was not happy. He found it so offensive. He hated me. Hated me. He said, I can't believe you're going to do that. It's, it's like a bouquet of flowers. It opens up and the flavours come out. Why? Why would you want to put milk and oat milk? So then I was like, okay, take scrap the milk. Can I just put ice in it? I don't like hot drinks. He was like, oh, <laughs> still not going to be. I was like, okay, dude, let's just keep. Doing you just have to. Coffee. You can't spend twenty quid on a coffee. It's just not legit in any way whatsoever. 
Okay, I to to be honest, I've got a couple of rogue things to to pick with you. The yeah, go co- on. That, the coffee, spending twenty quid in coffee. I didn't. A- I spent four ninety nine. And sorry, that's inflation of London prices, not my fault. Yeah, but you can't go and spend twenty quid on coffee. I didn't go do it. In I, case you were not the listening or there, uh, yeah. I held myself back and I said, "I'll come after my lunch," which was a lie. <laughs> I was never going to come back. <laughs> Is that a lie? Yes. Okay, well, the other thing that you've done this week, Sophie um, got a doctor around to the house because she thought she had mumps. I still really am concerned. Look, I'm just going to put it out here. I have quite an, a defined jawline. <laughs> All right, Lydia, here we I go. I have none. Like, th- this is a gland, and it's, <laughs> I can't feel my jaw. I don't know where it is. I don't know where the crack of, oh, there it is. <laughs> But wait, there's a ball there. I don't know what's going on, so I must have mumps. I have had mumps before. Sophie thought she had mumps, and I was so... He was like, get away from me, you selfish person. I was so concerned that I was going to... Because mumps for guys is really bad. It can go to your balls, and your balls will become huge. I didn't mean to. I, I once... Honestly, Sophie, I was at Leeds University, and I got mumps, and you can get it a couple of times, and I got mumps, and I sat down with my friend. He was called Harry. He was my housemate there. And I said, Harry, I've got mumps. You can't be around me. And he said, don't worry. I've had it before. Can't get it again. And I said, I don't think that's true. And he said, it is 100%. He came down the next day. He looked so unwell. I was like, buddy, you've got mumps. I was like, buddy, you've got mumps. He was like, no, I haven't had it before. And I was like, you definitely got it. And he was like, I haven't. He came down the next day, he looked even worse. And he was like, what do you think this is? And he lifted up his top. And just under his belly button between his penis, looked like someone had cut half a tennis ball and put it in there. Why and I did said, you there? And I said, that's mumps, mate. And he said, I've, it's not. I've had it before. And I went, it's definitely mumps. I thought mumps was on the face. It can go to your balls. Anyway, the next day he came down, he's like, I've got mumps. And I was like, what do you mean? He said, look at this. He pulled down his trousers and his balls were so big, he couldn't fit it into a pipe. No, glass. that's really scary. <laughs> No, it's really frightening. People, it's a dangerous, dangerous he tried thing. To get Why it. did you do he that? Tried to get it. And he was panicking. Why would you try? What reference is he that? Was so panicking when he couldn't get it in. Could he get it out? He couldn't get it in to a bike glass. So it was like that. It big. was. It was bigger than Each a tennis ball. ball. Each ball was bigger than How a tennis did ball. How he like move? He must have been wobbly. You can't, you lie down, it's really bad. Did you and really have it in your balls then? I had it in my face and I looked like Richard Nixon. I had it in one of my cheeks. One of my sheets. It didn't come to the other one when I was at uni too. Yeah, so I was so concerned that you had mumps and this doctor came round in the morning and tested you and all these different things. An uh, at-home doctor on a Sunday, by the way. Yeah. Because you were, yeah, 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 you got mumps, don't come near me. So this doctor comes over and I was like to Sophie, she's got mumps, don't come near me because I cannot catch it because I got just too much on at the moment. And anyway, lo and behold, I then... After the doctor's gone and stuff that, I walk into the bathroom, I get pick up my toothbrush, my electric toothbrush, which is in my bathroom. I start brushing my tooth. I'm like, it's wet. What the hell? Go back and I said, Sophie, did you use my toothbrush? My toothbrush. Hey, did you use my toothbrush? I was like, did you use my toothbrush? And you were like, yes. And I was like, you joke. You just... literally slobbered all over me the night before. So if you think that you weren't going to kiss it, get it from kissing me, I think you'd have got it from me brushing my teeth. Also, you rank, I use your toothbrush. Did I want my mops? You just use my stuff. Anyway, I don't thankfully have mumps, nor do you, but I was very scared. I have antibodies, really strong antibodies for mumps. <clears throat> and um, we don't know what else it is, to be honest. But I still have these big fat swollen glands. If anyone knows what, they, what it is, I feel great. You feel great? I this feel is the great. best you've ever felt. Yeah, I feel good. But I don't know what these glands are for. And I'm concerned because I listened to Stephen Bartlett's podcast with the stress doctor. And she said that all these really successful CEOs go away on holiday and they push down the illness and then they start to relax and it spikes up and they're so ill. And I've got a feeling I'm going to whack up in Dubai and I'm going to be bedridden because these glands are holding in some form of infection. You think so? Well, something's up. And that's, I've just got a fat face. And days. you are a big time CEO, baby. And I'm a successful CEO. <laughs> yeah, you are. So shit's going to go down in Dubai. <laughs> okay, honey. Uh, also, the other thing that Sophie keeps doing at the moment is, <laughs> Sophie and I, as we know, have these mating calls. I don't. I knew you were going to say it. I yeah. don't do it. I you do. We have- I really am repulsed by you. Like, there is <laughs> no way you're saying this. Sophie has this mating call with me where you walk and you go, row, row. 
No, no. <laughs> you will. We, they know that. They've all heard it. It's not a mating call. It doesn't mean I'm like bending over and saying, let's have sex. It's literally just me. Or is that amazing? Yeah, but you've now increased it one more. I haven't. You increased it one more where you went, rawr, rawr. <laughs> licked my face no, I didn't. like a dog. No, I didn't. Let me explain it. You so, were becoming a dog. No, I wasn't becoming a dog. So what happened was... Like a little poodle. Rawr, rawr. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is vile. I just, for anyone listening, I just stuck my tongue out and it touched the fucking microphone, which just had everyone's smelly breath all over it. I feel sick. Okay, let me just go back into this. I wasn't becoming a dog. Jamie, like, does this weird thing where he, like, so, like, nuzzle into my bosom. Like, I don't know what it is. He, like, it's called like, affection. Well, just hug me at a normal level. Like, you don't have to, like, nuzzle the head in. But anyway, I don't know what came over me, but I had my hands full. And instead of, like, I just, I don't know. I was feeling hyper anyway. And no, I don't like to lick people. And then you just licked my face. I didn't it like, was sweet, though. I liked it. I liked I the affection. I didn't like it at all. I like I don't the want to be that person. I like the affection that you give me sometimes because there are, whenever I go for affection with you, you put your hand out and you yeah, stop because me. Because I'm full of fake tan or I have my creams on at night and you like to smother that oily face of yours and give me spots. And what happens oily with boys? Face. Yes, you men give us female spots because you have hairy faces and the glands, your hair follicles give us girl spots. No, they don't. Yes, they do. Are you serious? Beard rash, beard spots, all that shit. And I don't want to, when I've got all my creams on my face, have that oil transferred onto my skin. So I go, whoa, talk to the hand because the face is... (laughs) And also, Sophie thinks I have a sex addiction. No, I really don't think we should talk about this. I don't think you have a sex addiction. I just think you're very weird with that side of things. Why? I don't know. What? Because I because I find you heavily attractive. Uh, I really, we're <laughs> deleting this part of the podcast and we're slightly moving on briskly. So, I find you heavily attractive. You, you need to stop having skin. You're so scary. I feel sick to my stomach. I'm really so dead. Anyway. But you actually, do, you actually do. You actually I don't. Let's move on. Okay. No, I'm uncomfy. <laughs> Why? It's so weird. Why would you want anyone to know that? I don't think you have a sex addiction because that means you're like literally having sex with every single Tom, Dick and Harry. <laughs> I just think you have something it's slightly wrong with you and maybe you should go see a doctor about it yeah well I, it's not that I just no because that's really embarrassing I don't want people thinking we're that crazy couple who like have a sex addiction in we, our relationship I, I can tell you right now I do not have a sex addiction you're just highly sexual no I just find you you're my uh, what I'm going to say moving on no rapping no, on Jack next segment no, what no, is it no. are you ready for <laughs> listeners messages no, no. no I will be sick I, I'm going to say well, you're my wife Good and luck. I, I'm never going to have sex with you again if you ever say that on this you're podcast. You're my wife. And you're I not find my you husband sexy. anymore. I'm filing for divorce. Let's get the divorce lawyer back on. Please, next segment. Let's go. I find you. Oh, please. I feel so uncomfortable. <sighs> don't, please don't do it, please. We really have to go on to the next segment. Okay, fine. We can move on. It just is. By the way, I had something really scary that happened to me. What happened? It was the most terrifying thing that's happened to me in recent years. In recent years, you Go were on. you were out of the house, mm-hmm. and I was um, by by myself, mm-hmm. and I walk out of the house. This was actually terrifying. I walk out of the house, and I was on my mobile phone talking to a friend, and I was on the phone just chat, 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 chatting away, and just having a nice little time. And I, you know, when you notice like someone's like looking at you, but you don't know it's nighttime. You feel that like the eyeballs in the back of your head. You feel the eyeballs, and I was like, what the hell? Anyway, and behind our place where we live is like a group of flats. I. Turn to my left and there's a doorway, a doorway into the flats. And it's a it's a black door and it's a black doorway. And the door is... Was it nighttime? Nighttime. No, I'm already free to And the door is open. The door was open and there was a man standing in the doorway with both his arms oh, either God. side of the door. Like that, like hold, like almost like pushing side. Like, and he was so hairy and like, and I looked at him. And he was staring at me and I was on the phone and I went, you okay? And he ran at me. But, and he ran at me. But where did you run to? I him? ran the other way. I, but, I like went, two shits in the night? No, no I did, he ran at me and I went, no! <laughs> ran up to the street. He ran <laughs> after me. That's honestly being chased. This is my worst He was, ra- like, I don't know what you do. But how you, hairy was he? Really hairy and scary. And he, like and he was like this, he was like really jittering. He ran at me. And I, and then I was thinking, <gasps> Do I run back at him? No. Like, what happens? And that's seen how small you are. That that's right there. Really frightening. That is pure. That is pure 
instinct. I would have lay flat on the floor and just said, take me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's what you would have done? I like the thought of it. I just know I wouldn't have been able to outrun him. So I'd have had to give up at some point. What would you just lay I would have like, held my nose to try and just die. I just can't bear thoughts like that. It's so awful. You would have held your nose as laying on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> what the <laughs> hell? And know. then you would have gone, ah, ah, <laughs> And just like being out of breath because you'd held your breath. I know, but I just really wouldn't have wanted to be. I would have wanted to like pass myself out rather than have have to run from that hairy monster. I I can't. The thought of it gives me like full heebie-jeebies. Ah, it was terrifying. It's time for. Oh, is it that time? You want to get into listeners' messages? Yeah. All right, baby girl. I find you heavily attractive. By the way, I have a little surprise for you talking about being heavily attractive because I know you look. You mean we? Are you yawning as I'm saying this? sexual things like okay it, well we are in. going to and so i thought as a little surprise after listeners messages i have a surprise guest coming on who i'm not gonna tell you okay but it might be to do with sex oh for god's sake okay coming on after listeners messages you ready for that i guess i am light the candles Roll the bed sheets out, Jokes. I don't know. Just stop. I'm very, very awkward. Okay. All right. Well, before that, it's time for listeners' messages. Da, da, da. Two things. If you are listening to this podcast and you haven't clicked that little subscribe button um, wherever you listen to this, it would be just so amazing if you possibly could. Um, it just honestly helps us so much. And that would be so kind. And also, if you haven't checked out our YouTube channel as well, Newlyweds, we have all of our videos on the channel. You can go and watch every single one of them. They're super fun and engaging and hopefully you like it. And also, if you can subscribe to that, that would be amazing. Isn't that right, Soph? Yes, it would be just wonderful. It would be wonderful. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Listener's Messages on Newlyweds Podcast. Um, It's Sophie and Jamie. Oh, my God. Why are you talking weirdly? Okay. Well, anyway, it's our Listener's Messages part. We love this bit. Okay, Um, ready? I'm ready for you, baby. Okay. This is really from... make it good. I want to. Oh, shut up! I really want to feel this one. You're bothering me. This is from Megan. What did you just flick away? A little bit of mohair. Okay. All right, mohair. Okay, mohair. Your listener's message about saying the wrong thing has reminded me of this boy. I Who's this from? Firstly, from Megan. I've okay. said that. If you oh. listen. <laughs> okay. Well, we were having sex and in the middle of the sex, I started talking dirty and it was fun. I don't think, however, that he was quite as into it, but I could tell he was trying. No. (laughs) Like I, all this sex chat, like, fuck, no. And then mid-stroke, he suddenly yelled out, I love my pussy. (laughs) (laughs) He said, I love my pussy. He went, I love my pussy. (laughs) I think he went, I love your pussy. Ah! Ah! Everything wrong this, but got it completely wrong. We still laugh about it today. <laughs> Hang on, I got more. Okay. Oh no, that's another thing. That's the story. That is so good. I just, it's like, you know, when oh, you God. used to dream about having sex with your mom, it's the same sort of thing. Like the... <laughs> I never dreamed about having you sex did. with my mum. No, used to I try and have sex with me, and you'd picture Penny's face. No, and it's fighting, and it's so weird. No, I used to have this this twitch or a tick where Fantasy. when I was having sex, my mum would suddenly pop into my head. Well, it's the same thing. It's like they wouldn't want to say it. It's like you're overthinking having sexy chat, and then the worst thing you could say, you end up saying it. Okay, well here we go. I've got one, Jamie. This is to me. This is sex related. Thank God. I hope that's okay. Of course it is. I was dating this guy and I was around my parents' house. I was living there at the time. And my parents didn't totally know I was gay. Although looking back, they defo did know. Anyway, I was dating this boy. We'll call him Ben for the sake of the story. He was round and we started getting with each other. After a few minutes, I started to give him head. It was quite fiery and very sexy. Until suddenly, without thinking, my mum yells up to us, Are you boys ready for dinner? To which... I instinctively replied with full dick in my mouth, not yet, mum. Although because of his penis, it was super gargled and muffled and sounded more like moot meat, (laughs) mum. She replied saying, is everything all right? I went bright red and Ben was in hysterics. I was so paranoid mum had put two and two together. I'd just come out to my mum through a penis in my mouth. A few months later, however, I did come out and it was amazing and we hugged and cried. We never spoke of the penis in my mouth situation and it's safe to say I've never spoken with one in my mouth again. 
That's oh, amazing. I love that. I love that. I absolutely love that. Same. I've got another one. Oh, have you? Okay, honey. Okay, this is from Sam. Hello. In 2008, I married Debbie after eight amazing years of being together. Following Jamie and Sophie's wedding brought back so many happy memories for us. Having been incredibly fortunate up to then, we knew married life would bring its challenges. Just not this one. We wanted a family and started trying for a baby in 2020. Debbie got pregnant soon after, but sadly suffered a miscarriage. The sense of loss is impossible to articulate, but we tried to stay as positive as possible. What followed was more than 18 months of trying, heaps of our doctor's appointments without any major discoveries or answers, and ultimately no luck. The emotional strain was particularly draining for Debbie, especially as seemingly everyone around her was getting pregnant. Throughout this experience, one thing that has kept us smiling, laughing positive and led off her headed is the podcast oh. oh often listening on the way to appointments has been such a blessing i can't thank you enough fast forward to today and we were listening to the episode sophie's return as we made our way to the john radcliffe hospital in oxford you're fucking kidding me guys that's really freaky that's where i was born we just spoke about that. i know what the I hell goosebumps that's insane what i feel emotional for some reason we were heading there because the second round of IVF... What the hell? We were heading there because the second round of IVF has been successful and Debbie is now over 12 weeks pregnant. Debbie! Debbie and Sam were so happy for you. Oh my God. That's amazing. After a nervy but successful scam, we made our way home with the fam- with the familiar sounds of listeners' messages and Jamie's latest bum problems. It's been one hell of a journey and you unknowingly have been a shining light throughout. It may seem dramatic, but it's the small things that pick you up when life gets tough. Laughter really is the best medicine. It's our fifth wedding anniversary next month and I've always tried to do something unique and special for Debbie. I was wondering if you both could find it in the mental schedule to do a short video message just to say happy anniversary. Debbie... Congratulations on your fifth anniversary. Congratulations on your pregnancy. Thank you for listening to the podcast. We're so glad it brings you spirits and yeah, excitement. Guys. We don't know if it's a girl or a boy, but Jamie is good for both. And I honestly think you should <laughs> just consider it. No. Just consider do. He'll Con- be or she will be. Let's just, let's just it's keep sweet. A Jamie is a cute girl. Yeah. Thing. Congratulations. We love, we love you guys. Thank you so let's, much. Yeah. Love you. Um, hey, listen, before we end listeners' messages, last episode, Soph, we asked the listeners to send in some suggestion names for your little Fiat 500. Italian Stallion. No. You don't like that one? Is it an Italian car? Yeah, it's a Fiat. Oh, I kind of like it. Italian stallion. Quite long. Like, oh, can you just remember to put the Italian stallion? That's wicked. I love that. IT. <gasps> Maybe the Italian job. I just thought of that. The Italian hand job. No, that's terrible. Oh my God. Sex uh, addiction. I know. You're fucking weird. That was a real room turn of that one. That was really odd. This is what I deal with on a regular basis, guys. It's really odd. The whole room just twisted. Okay, come as on. I said. okay here we go. Uh, Twisty boy. Crash prone? No, that's asking me to be in a car crash, guys. Okay. Uh, Phoebe Fiat? Sweet, but it's a P, not a Fee. Uh, okay. Blue. <laughs> Jemima <laughs> likes that one. Blue boy. Oh my god, Jamie, you just go blue boy, blue boy, blue boy, blue. Blue boy, blue boy, blue boy, blue. That yeah, maybe, but that was when you felt blue. What about Remy the Fiat? Why the fuck would it be Remy? These are so Francisco random. the Fiat? No, guys, these are so random. Can Luigi I... the Fiat? I like that, but Please don't crash me. No. Okay, and Sky. No. All right, okay. Please send us in some more I names. I liked Blue Boy, Blue Boy, Blue Boy, Blue. <laughs> no, I like the Italian job. Yeah, because you're fucking weird and perfect. Perverty. Okay. All right. Well, well, we also had some baby names in. Are you Go ready on. for this? Here we go. These are fantastic. Go on. Gwen Lang. Gwen Lang. No, no. Gwen no. Lang. <laughs> <laughs> you're kidding. Uh, Matteo Hubu. <laughs> Matteo. No. Matteo Hubu. Oh, Matthew Habu. Matthew Habu. <laughs> Matthew Habu. Uh, xylophone. <laughs> Podcast. Poddy for short. <laughs> Podcast. Imagine if we got a Poddy's po- going fast. Poddy. How are you writing, Poddy? 
<laughs> no. no, you got to be quite a ploddy pod if you're a pod. All right, everybody, please keep sending in your suggestions for children's names, for the Fiat names. And also, uh, please um, just keep sending in your stories. We love them, as we always say. Thank you so much for spending your time. I know it takes time to do that, but it means a huge amount to us. Funnier, crazier, the better. Send it to at Newlyweds Podcast on Instagram or slide into our emails, uh, newlyweds at jampopproductions.co.uk. And we have our special hotline, uh, which is our phone number, which you can send voice notes and voicemails to. It's basically Jack's personal phone. The number now works and it is in the description below. So you can go and grab it. And it's all anonymous. If you want it to be anonymous. If you don't want it to be anonymous, great. But it is all anonymous if you want it to be anonymous. So... Yes, it's done. All right, Sister Pants, you ready for this? I'm ready. Route, route. That's the end of... This is last year's. Get ready for this because we have a big old guest. Well, they're not big or old. I don't know why. I, they're not. They're young and fruitful and divine and beautiful. But also, they are... A sex educator. Ooh. A sex expert, Sophie. Anyway, we've invited Alex onto the episode because Sophie and I are newlyweds. And you know what? I want to keep the spice alive. I want to keep the... Honey, there's enough spice going on in my life. Okay, honey. But sometimes, you know, we have sex and you laugh and all these different things. So I want to make sure that, you know, we're on the right road to... to Stardom. To, to, yeah. Why don't you intro this? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, please. No, not boys and girls, too young. Ladies and gentlemen, grandpas and grannies, please welcome Alex... Fox. Hello, Jamie and Strider. <laughs> Strider? Yeah, how do you know that? I, well, I use my ears. I've been tuned in. <laughs> She's I, I've been <laughs> listening to your to your nicknames. God knows I have a few myself. We have so, we have so many nicknames for each other. We do. What's the new one? Well, the new one that Sophie keeps doing to me at the moment is wherever we go, she keeps going. No, this. <laughs> I can't stop. And that is, we were just talking before we started recording about horror movies. And Jamie keeps showing me this horror movie where this girl goes, and I can't. It's like Tourette's. It keeps just happening. And I'm like, doing it to me the whole time. But I'm really good at it. It's it's like a, I'm looking at you. Just give it a go. Yeah, we- <laughs> us cars are we- yeah. <laughs> addictive. Alex, welcome to the podcast. Um, okay, can you um, explain uh, what you do? What you're known for and all around that. Okay. Most people's not suitable for work is my work. Mm-hmm. Uh, my name is Alex Fox. Usefully rounds with Phallix Cox because I talk about the ins, the outs, the ups and downs and the side to sides of sex. The thing I'm probably most known for recently is there's a show on Netflix called Sex Education. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm a script consultant for that. So my job is to check that some of the sexual elements of that are factually correct and would happen like that in the real world. I, I basically <laughs> stick my nose where it shouldn't belong. It, metaphorically but, <laughs> but it's so great because you know the reason why we want you on the podcast is because obviously Sophie and I are newlyweds and you know I want to keep the relationship alive you're newlyweds and you want to make it feel like newly beds yeah. all the time keep that spice the, yes the, the whole time isn't that right Soph yes the whole time and Sophie thinks I have <laughs> a problem you Sophie. think I have a bit of a problem I don't know I'm eager to know like from a scientific side and your opinion on like how much people should want ha- to have sex maybe I'm a very unsexual person I don't want to have sex that much we're going right into the kill okay <laughs> um, do you find yourself thinking about sex in a way that interferes with your day does it feel like a problem or do you, does it just feel like you generally think about sex more than she does Alex listen I think I'm sexy and I'm li- when I'm lying on the bed and I'm literally thinking I'm sexy. I don't think you think I'm that sexy. What? <laughs> oh my God. No, I can't. I can't. Are you okay? I think you just want compliments. No, I can't. I don't want to out you. You don't have a sex addiction, I'm sure. I don't have a sex addiction at all. You no, I, said this have a, I said this as so, you know, newlyweds. I just, I think it's a healthy <laughs> thing to have is when you find your wife attractive. I think that's a great absolutely, thing. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. It, it sounds like though you spend a lot of your time going, oh my God, she looks like a snack. I feel like a snack. It's a snack attack. And she's like, Jamie, I love you, but I'm full. I, I don't want to be filled further by you. It's Am always a I, a I really don't like to have sex when I'm full. I yes. really don't enjoy that. That's 
gets like <laughs> uncomfy on my tummy. It makes me feel like I'm going to vomit or it's going to, you know, just something bad is going to happen. So I like to digest my food. Morning, nighttime, give me the day to rest. You, any time of the day goes. Also, I'm going to put it out there straight away because we've got to get it. When we do have sex, Sophie laughs at me. No, uh, <laughs> she yeah, but it's... laughs. She finds me very funny. Well, <laughs> but I actually think that can be a good thing. Um, society would have us believe that sex always has to be super slick and polished and like, you know, slippery and glamorous and sleek. But actually, laughter is a release. Mm. If you can bond together by having a good old laugh, at, let's face it, what is often awkward and squelchy <laughs> and ridiculous, <laughs> then that can be a really good thing. Where that can become a little bit more, uh, make you feel a bit more vulnerable and maybe a bit fragile is if you're feeling yourself and like maybe taking a chance on trying to be confident and seduce someone and they're like, <laughs> your dick is ridiculous. You know? I never laugh at your dick. <laughs> Just him being a dick. Because it's just funny. Like, I just think you're funny. That's all there is to it. You're a funny, funny guy. You laugh. You just, it's because you laugh at my facial expressions. I think that's I what just, it is. yeah, he gets very, uh, I, can't, <laughs> I can't say it, Alex. I don't know how you're so confident in saying this. You, you get very into things and I find it so funny. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Well, I don't think there's anything wrong with laughing as long as you're laughing warmly together. <laughs> well, laughing always warmly, never at you, just yeah. with you. You, know, you always laugh with me, that is true. Always with you. <laughs> as, soon, as soon as you look at me, you start laughing. <laughs> It's like immediate. It's like boom, and then she has to almost close her eyes because she. No. Well, I was going to say, Jamie. what about a blindfold? Oh. If looking at Jamie's face cracks you up to the point where you're distracted from your own crack, <laughs> then you could cover your eyes, and that could be a sexy thing if you feel safe that, doing that. Maybe that would be the right thing to do. I read this thing that actually you should try and keep it alive twice a week. You should be trying to have sex. That's a good thing for a relationship. What is your advice for people if you try if you want to keep the relationship alive? How do you keep the fire burning? What is the advice to do that? Well, first of all, I think the idea of having sex twice a week, I want to expand about uh, expand that. Yeah. Rather than dictating, emphasis on dick, that you're going to have sex that often, why don't you schedule in a period of intimacy or say you're going to be sensual twice a week? Because otherwise, booking that in and saying, we've got the dicking down in the diary here, um, if you're too rigid about that, for mm. want of a better word, then if somebody's not in the mood, they can feel obligated to do something that physically and emotionally they're not uh, they're not feeling. And to force yourself to do something when you don't want to sexually is dangerous and damaging territory. So schedule in sensuality rather oh than God. sex. I would also expand your idea of what quote unquote sex means. I think I've said this to you before, Jamie, but sex doesn't always have to be P and V. Doesn't have to be penis what? and vagina. Doesn't have to be putting a pole in a hole being the sole goal. The okay. <laughs> you you can do what else is there? You can what do is? sensual massages. You can listen to erotica yeah. together. You can play with toys. Yes. You can talk about your fantasies. Okay, let's talk about that. I like the massaging, but I'm not sure about what you're gonna be like. No, fantasy for me is you wear like a, a little school teacher outfit <gasps> and you come in and you tell me that I've got detention. No, I can't. I'm stopping that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's what well, I want to, and and the in the outfit, and, the, no. and also for some reason, as a, the teacher, you've come and you're wearing like a little tartan outfit. What? Is it, I'm a school teacher or I'm a teacher? She's a Scottish teacher. You're, you're a I mean, Scot so basically, you want a school girl, but you feel wrong saying that, so you've gone up to a, a school teacher. <laughs> I can't. I don't think I can. I, my fantasy would be like on a beach, pina colada, like sea. Okay, hang on. Okay, I can give you some tips on both of these. Uh, what is your What is your fantasy first? So, honestly, what's your fantasy go? Being on a beach, sea breeze, someone giving me a massage on the beach. It doesn't have to be sensual, female, anyone. Just like nice massage, what, really getting into I? my feet. You could be. Am sad. I just walking past? You're just <laughs> there. Oh my gosh! And then he's at the You're restaurant waiting me for uh, have lunch. This is just all a my day food. out. <laughs> That's my fancy. And you're going to be at the restaurant. You're going to have ordered all the food I want. My dark coat's going to be waiting. It's going to be perfect. And when are we having sex? Oh, it doesn't have to be that. That's not <laughs> my fancy. You're having sensuality. So oh. Maybe oh, you can have God. a sensual moment. Now, what I'm hearing here, Sophie, is that 
you like luxury, you like relaxation, <laughs> you like to feel pampered and cared for. Touch. So I somebody love touching. paying attention to your body, but also listening to what you want <gasps> them to do. Yeah. And from the holiday, maybe there's an element of the desire to escape. If your day-to-day -day oh. life is uh, quite stressful or you experience anxiety, then wishing yourself away to an exotic location Lovely. Uh, and adding sex and sensuality in that can be the ultimate escapism. Now that's quite difficult to just click your fingers or and find yourself <laughs> suddenly in the Bahamas. So what you could do is maybe <laughs> darken your room or like put some put some uh, some sexy lights on. Calm with the clicking. No. <laughs> <laughs> I've added some creepy eyes to it as well now, haven't I? I'm looking at you over the mic. Like, it's quite sensual itself. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm seeing how deep I can go. But anyway, back to it. Uh, you could put on a soundtrack of waves. Oh, and then do you guys maybe have a favourite suntan lotion? You know, where the aroma immediately mm. takes you yeah. back to your mm -hmm. honeymoon. Piz yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really like wondered where you're going with the piz. <laughs> There's a lot of piz and shit talk on this yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, piz bois. Right? Yeah. I'll get some piz bois. Why are you saying it like that? Piz bois. You're piz making it very like... It's French. It's not piz bois. I'm piz bois. Piz bois. It is piz bois. Bon. No, I'll be sick. You wear Lancaster anyway. Stop trying to be cool. No, I don't know. Where, that's the after sun. Piz bois. Bon. I wear... Oh, no, no, no. I'm bothered. Piz bois. Bon. Okay, right. He can slap okay. on his piz bois. Bon. So maybe you, maybe you do that for you one time during this week and whereas you Jamie interestingly mm -hmm. it doesn't surprise me that uh, as a dramatic open-minded person you're hinting at role play Love and the idea play. yeah the idea of do that. again pretending to be somebody else for a while can be really escapist and freeing and, and help give you a pause from your day-to-day -day life if I may suggest, there were some elements of wanting to be dominated in there. You want <laughs> Sophie to tell you what to do. Sophie, you should only do this if you feel comfortable with it, but given how much you tell Jamie <laughs> off, I think you'd actually be very good at it. Pretty sure you are, yeah. Um, tell me what to do, honey. Oh, God. <laughs> it's really, really common, though, for people who have a life where usually they are the ones in charge responsible for organizing a lot lots of uh lots of things on their to-do list it's really common for those people to want to enjoy sex where somebody else does that for them it's in contrast to your usual life that so is... your fantasies don't surprise me at all why don't we do this you're you're at home and there's a knock at the door hello hey <laughs> hey I, and i walk in and and i'd we... be like usual key <laughs> See, this is what I'm dealing with in role play. This is. What I, don't, I don't want any role play. I never sign out that. I want to go on holiday. Okay, okay. I'm going to dim the lights and put on whale noses. And then you want me to massage you with the piss bois? <laughs> is that what you want me to do? No, no, no piss bois. Another thing I want to ask you is if people's libidos are different. Uh -huh. So if someone, you're in a relationship, someone has a high libido yeah. and the other person has a lower libido, how do you then communicate that? Okay, for a start, it's really, really common. There's a massive survey that's done periodically in Britain called NATSAL. I think it's the uh, National Survey of uh, Sexual Attitudes and Lifestyles. It looks at thousands upon thousands of people. Um, the last one they did showed that at least one in four couples say that one of them has a higher libido than the other. So, And there's probably more than that because people aren't always honest. They mm -hmm. get embarrassed and they fib and they're like, yeah, yeah, we're fine. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so for a start, you're common. You're common as muck when it comes to the fuck, I'm afraid. You do. Yeah. Like, one wanting to do it a bit more than the other, totally normal. Um, communication, which I already think you're good, good at, talking yeah. about it and talking about it at the right time. Just because it's common doesn't mean that it can't be difficult. The person with the lower libido can feel nagged. They can feel like slightly angry if they feel like someone's on their case. They can feel nervous and upset and disappointed that maybe they're letting their partner down by not satisfying them frequently enough. They can worry that something's wrong with them. Equally, the partner with the high libido can feel like uh, rejected if they're turned down a lot yeah. for sex or sensuality. Uh, they can feel upset that they're chasing all the time and they don't want to like, be on their partner's case. So it, 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 even though it happens to a lot of people, that doesn't mean that uh, it's not problematic. Again, opening up your idea of 
what sex can look like can really help to to bring people together a bit more. So the person with the lower libido might well be up for something sensual, even if they don't want to have penetrative sex at one point. Talk to me about about, um, toys. Oh, now I'm a big fan of toys. Okay. Now I do understand before we get into this, before we delve deep, before we lube all the way up to the elbow and delve into one of my favourite topics. <laughs> toys are brilliant because they add spice and playfulness and new sensations, but I still think you can have a really great sex life without them. I think people should try and see toys as their teammates rather than their yeah. rivals. Okay, yeah. They are complementary, not competitors. Got that. A good way of thinking about it is if someone said, right, you've got to chop down this tree. Mm. You can't do it with your bare hands. You've got to use an axe. You would not feel emasculated by using the right tool for the job. No. So learning to use sexual tools in ways that can give your partner unparalleled pleasure doesn't make you a dick. It makes you a don. It doesn't Alex, emasculate you. It question. elevates you. Well, all what the time. is it if you don't need any tools? I have a question. <laughs> it's not what about need. It's about enhancement, though, isn't it? You I know? don't think I need any tools. But what happens I when think I'm well ma- equipped over here. I feel like Sophie is looking at you like you are a tool right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you. I what think happens when boys don't know where to put or how to use? Excellent question. Okay. Is there yeah. not a handbook for boys to be learning that sort what of What boys thing? are you talking about, Percy? <laughs> just general boys. What boys? Ones who sit what there going, boys? I don't need anything. <laughs> Amy. I just got my mouth and it can do this. I'm just, I'm just going to click into your coochie, baby. It sounds like a little mouse dancing in clogs, doesn't it? <laughs> There's some role play for you. Jane. I'm gonna, that I will join in with. I'm going to cut down making some mouse mouses in my clogs and do a little clog dance. Wing. I would absolutely love Last that. Game. I would absolutely. I'll make whale noises and then get my piss <laughs> ah, I love how creative you're both getting, and also you're bonding over this. This this is brilliant. But I said, I said, I, I have seen those butt plugs that yeah. have a horse's tail Where coming out the back. Have you seen it? I've seen it. Yeah, and you can have it. Yeah? And so what happens if my fetish to have one of those things and so you became a pony? I would think you're really weird. Is that fair to say? No, I have to... There are lots of people who have those kind of fantasies where... But why? For my well, birthday, I want you for... to become a pony. My little pony? My little pony. <laughs> well, then they can like wish their the little tail around. I would honestly, it would be, it would make my life on my birthday, I came downstairs and you were all on all fours as a pony. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> I don't with know the what. butt plug with multicolored yeah. hair coming out of it. With a horn to make some a unicorn. When I was younger, I can't believe I'm going to tell the story, but when I was younger, I'm scared. I had these two little things called Big Silky and Little Silky. Uh, oh, God. And Big Good Silky time. was like a thing, like a, a rug from my mum cut it off and like I, a like a comfort blanket like a comfort thing. blanket yeah. and I like, like oh they, did it did your blanket turn into a wanker no it didn't but I, I thought this would be fun <laughs> so I tied one end to my penis and the other end to a door and I used to slam the door shut <laughs> <laughs> did, did it did it feel good? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's why I used to, I used to go whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so I used to slam and go whoa. Like, <laughs> it sounds like you're trying to pull a tooth. Or I know, but also, like, surely your dick could have just blown <laughs> off. I don't know. I just, it was really exciting. Yeah. But Jamie like cracks his dick in the morning. <laughs> Oh, that's interesting. Tell me more about like, that. Like he says, it's like a muscle. So he like wakes up, obviously. Then I guess, or uh-huh. maybe it's just Jamie in the morning. There's always, and he goes crack, crack. Like well, I'm someone <laughs> cracking their knuckles. Yes. No, it doesn't crack. <laughs> he does. He bends it left. He bends it right. Yeah, it's, it's your, st- your dick stretch. is just so addictive. It's like it, crack. It's a so, stre- no, no, he stretch. like stretches it like he would pull his leg. Oh my god, it's really this is very okay. Well, if, you, if you've gone down this road, then I'll then I'll explain it. Okay, fine. What happens is is, is I think men wake up sometimes and you 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 have uh, what, morning glory, morning uh-huh. glory. Or That's very healthy. But why is that? It's uh, the body essentially uh, practicing overnight. It's extremely healthy. In fact, if you stop having uh, nighttime erections or, or morning glory, sometimes that can be an indicator of a health problem. So great, great. healthy boy. Having healthy a, as anything. Rising with the sun. Um, perfect. Um, I'm normal. healthy yeah. as anything. And like yeah, I stretch, so far, so, you stretch so your standard. arms or stretch your legs. Yeah. It's a muscle. I, 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 yeah, you does stretch it make a sound? No, it doesn't Sometimes make... it does. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit like that. It's like bend it, he bends it to the left and then he bends it to the right. And then sometimes forward and back. 
I'm not doing it. If it's not hurting you, and and you're just like waking everything up, it's like a morning yoga. Yeah, it's like morning yoga. I have to say, (laughs) in my almost two decades of of, of sexuality communication, this is a new one to me. So thank you, Jamie, for sharing. But I don't think there's anything wrong or weird about that. I bet I would bet money on there being people listening and going, oh yeah, I like to wake and shake. Yeah, 100%, exactly. Okay. Okay, so what do we have here? So this is a brand new one called the Tenga Puffy. Oh my if god! If I take the lid off there, oh you can see that there is an insertable crevice there. Wow! It's very so can... small that little crevice. Well, it's very, it's very stretchy <gasps> and soft. There. Oh! oh my it's god. designed so like nowhere. slime. <laughs> you pop a little bit of lube inside. You slide yourself inside, and then it's squidgy, so that you can actually put pressure on the outside of your penis as well and wank yourself with it. Oh my god! I'm sorry. I have to put my finger in. Please do. Okay, talk to you about the octopus leg. Okay, this bra- the very neon uh, silicone insertable dildo is is designed like an octopus tentacle. It's made by the same company who made this. Finger licking good bucket o chicken. <laughs> They're called Sinovator. They specialize in like really way out wild fantasy toys. What other kinks are there? What are they? What are yeah, those strange another, kinks are there? Oh, my, pretty much. If you can imagine it, somebody will have fetishized it. Alex, honestly, wow. this has been an absolute joy. Good. This it, has been sex a, should joy. Be a joy. It's, it's so should interesting be a joy. too. Thank you so much. And you've got your book coming out as well. I'm working on it in the moment. In fact, I am going to be interviewing a lot of people. So if there are listeners who would feel comfortable anonymously, privately talking to me about their sex lives, please follow me on Instagram. It's at A-L-I-X with one I, like Cyclops, Fox, F-O-X, at Alex Fox on Insta. Uh, the book is called The Missing Kink. It is designed to be that missing book that you've been looking for that isn't so advanced that you feel like it alienates you, but isn't so simple that it's like, <laughs> a very handcuff. Alex, thank you so much. We're going to leave all of those things in our description below, all the links to your Instagram and everything like that. Thank you so much for thank coming on Newlyweds. Thank you so much, um, Hey, I feel, Sophie, we're going to have a, a bright future. Mind blown. Mind blown. Where's that, that puffy friend of mine? That puffy friend is going to be wrapped in my hand and all day I'm just going to be like... <laughs> okay, anyway, uh, anyway... Oh anyway... God, we're always flustered. Okay. I'm flustered. Guys, uh, we hope you enjoyed the episode. Thank you, Alex, for coming on. We absolutely love doing it. Um, okay, that's the end of it. We're going to be back next week as always. Um, please send in any funny stories you have. Maybe some sex stories. We want to hear more sex yes, stories. Naughty, silly stories. Please send it to our Instagram at Newlyweds Podcast, or you can send us an email, newlyweds at jampopproductions.co.uk. All of the links in the description. Remember, we're on YouTube as well and TikTok, all those different things. Okay, so if it's the end of the episode, what do we say here? Good, uh, at the end of the episode. Oh my goodness. <laughs> if you're getting engaged. Good luck. If you are married. Whoa. If you are single. Oh, you go get them, uh, fishermen. If you are. Fishermen. <laughs> fishermen. <laughs> so gonna... Fisher. <laughs> what the hell? Keep going. Oh, and if you are a fisherman. Uh, go for no, it. No, we've lost it. Come on. No. If you're getting divorced. Oh, go get it. If you're thinking of getting engaged. Go do it. And if you are alone. And you're never alone. You're never alone. You've got us. You have us every Monday. And that's why we're here. We love you. We'll see you next week. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. So long, sailors. <laughs> 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 <laughs>